Guys, this live cast, if you're listening on a podcast after the fact or you're watching on YouTube after the fact, it is a few days after we've done this, we went live for supporters first. Facebook supporters, there's a link in the description on how you can join for four ninety nine a month and join a tribe of people that care deeply about transforming healthcare. There are thousands of us now. We have nightly discussions. We go live here first because we want to get that energy and that engagement from the super fans around topics that we deeply care about, and then we might bring it to the main page if you're good. So definitely sign up as a supporter if you wanna see this stuff first, and have your voice and comments heard now. So I want supporters to comment on this because this is an important topic and we have an important guest today. Today we have Dr. Todd Wolin, who is the CEO of Kids Plus Care in did I say it right? Kids plus pediatrics. Kids plus pediatrics in Pittsburgh. See, I had one thing to remember, <laughs> and I forgot it. So Kids plus pedi- uh, pediatrics in Pittsburgh, he is a crusader, a vaccine avenger. Put up, the, put up the triptych for me. There it is. You see him? So a vaccine avenger and pediatrician, which is exactly what he is, because he's going to teach us today about how we can actually, you know, whether it's physicians or nurses, healthcare professionals, how we can fight back when anti-vaxxers and other anti-science lunatics, that's my word, not his, he's much more professional than me, come at us. Because it's been a thing. Doctors have been attacked. They've had their reputations destroyed. These horrible uh, vitals.com and these other websites, you know, that that do... uh, um, a physician grading have become cesspools of anti-vax nonsense. And so Todd has taken it as a crusade to try to fight back because so often we're disempowered. Todd, welcome to the show, brother. Thank you. Thanks so much for having me. Man, so how, so tell me a little bit about your background. You're a pediatrician. How, how did all that happen? Oh yeah. Um, pediatrician, born and raised in Pittsburgh, stayed there. Also um, a board certified lactation consultant. Oh, uh, w- so that put 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 the thing again, Logan. International so international board international certified board lactation. certified lactation consultant. Yes. So you're a breast Nazi. I, I am not a breast Nazi. <laughs> I am I am supportive of providing evidence based uh, medicine and support for breastfeeding. I love it. I love it. So so <laughs> that's really actually quite convenient because you're also a pediatrician, so you can do both. You know that's where it comes evidence based, right? So our mantra at our practice is we're going to support women the way they want to be supported, but I wouldn't make a recommendation on anything like a vaccine without giving you informed consent. I don't know why people aren't giving informed consent on feeding. So if I told you your risk for lymphoma and uh, um, leukemia for kids are decreased with breastfeeding or the mother's risk for breast cancer and ovarian cancer decreased by breastfeeding, you should know that information. Mm -hmm. doesn't mean you have to breastfeed, but you should have informed consent. It makes perfect sense. Now, it's funny because you use the term informed consent, which is one of these anti-vax like (laughs) slogans, right? Well, if we had informed consent, then we would not (laughs) choose to vaccinate. And I mean, what? So how did you get involved in this great vaccine struggle? Yeah, um, our practice was involved with actually uh, clinical vaccine studies for 14 years. So I was I was involved with over 40 studies as a sub eye on about 40, a, pr- a principal investigator on about three. So I got my my feet wet in vaccines and got to see how intensively they're studied, to see how everything has to be written down, the storage of the vaccine, any complaint anybody has. So we got to see this from the beginning all the way through, and we pretty much almost any vaccine that's currently in the regimen, we were involved in almost most of the original studies. That's incredible. And you're a private group. Independent pediatric group, one of the proud remaining 20% of independent pediatricians. Fantastic. And you work with AAP and some other organizations too on advocacy? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. I do a lot of work with the American Academy of Pediatrics. I've started doing some work with the International Pediatric Association as well, because specifically on the topic of vaccine hesitancy or confidence, it's a global issue now. You know, so we, we have people that are putting out disinformation that are, you know, eroding vaccine uh, herd immunity. But like in Pakistan, they just killed vaccine uh, uh, workers and, and the police that, that guard them. So disinformation can be life-threatening. And, and people receive death threats here in the U.S. because they promote vaccines. See, this to me is why I wanted to have you on the show, because when you emailed me, you were like, oh, this is the work we're doing, uh, would love your opinion on it. And I'm like, yeah, my opinion is come on the show and teach me about this now, because so many uh, physicians have messaged me specifically, and nurses as well. I just got in this debate online with these anti-vaxxers, I had no idea they existed like this. I had no idea how crazy they are. And now they're trying to ruin my reputation, writing these false reviews, attacking, calling my hospital, telling telling them that I'm uh, advocating child murder and turning children into autistic zombies. 
And and so have you yourself ever been a victim of this? Yeah. First, I want to put things into context. Um, in the U.S., we have about 75% of people who are vaccine accepting. You say, I recommend the vaccine, and they're they're totally down with it. 75%? That's 75%. it. 75%. Just are just down. They're, you right. just say, I recommend the vaccine, and they say, sure. Got it. About 23% are vaccine hesitant, and you have about 1% to 2% that are anti-vaccine. So where the real issue here is, hmm. and where the science is going, they talk about communication sciences, trying to figure out and reach the people that are hesitant. But when you get to that 1% to 2% that are anti-vaccine, you're dealing with a completely different entity. And there, there's a hybrid even amongst them. And, and so to your question, yes, we were the victim of a global coordinated anti-vaccine attack, uh, so we, Kids Plus Pediatrics, for posting a video called We Prevent Cancer. Uh, broke 100,000 views. It was uh, shot in that, our that's shot. That's legit. Yeah, yeah. And we have a production studio on site. So nice. uh, so I want to throw a big shout out to Chad Herman, who is the Kids Plus Pediatrics Communications Director. Um, he's been with us since Kids Plus formed. And he was the one that told us we need to get heavily into social, heavy into social media. He said, you know, video is really the right media that we should really eventually be working in. And he said, you know, they promised me, but I knew they'd never do it. But we built out a production studio about three years ago, actually launching a podcast in another month. Um, but, you know, by the way, that's all a scam. I don't believe in video, <laughs> podcasts, or social media at all, Todd. So, by the way, how can people find that video? Uh, the video is, um, if you go to our YouTube or Vimeo channels, um, you'll be able to find them. Or onto our Facebook page. That's where the 100,000 so, views occurred. So it, search Kids Plus Pediatrics. pediatrics. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. so you did this video and you – okay, I want to back up for a second because some stuff you said is actually a little bit of news to me, those numbers. Yeah. So I'm learning as I go about this stuff. I, I work – I'm, I'm kind of like a um, – I'm like uh, an in weirdly intuitive creature that then turns to data after the intuition. So my intuition was always there's a hardcore fringe of anti-vaxxers that are delusional and dangerous, and then there's the rest that are on the fence, and then the vast majority that are actually reasonably accepting and have been conditioned a certain way. Whatever it is, they, they realize there are experts, and they're recommending this, and they trust their experts because they feel like they have the child's best interest in mind. But it's that one to two percent mm -hmm. that cause all the trouble, especially for the twenty percent that are on the fence. So this has actually been looked at in terms of percentages. It has been. It, it's it's been shown again and again. And what's most uh, exciting is that the the most influential, most impactful resource for parents to go to is their trust of physicians, pediatricians or other physicians or healthcare workers, right? Yeah, nurses in particular, yeah. Yeah, yeah. nurses even higher, right? Higher, if, you, yeah. if you look, I went to the AAP's legislative conference and they said they ranked like most trusted professions and there was like oh. nurses, there was pediatricians, there was teachers, there was Sith Lord, there was congressmen, <laughs> right? It was just kind of like in that order. <laughs> Sith Lord beats congressman, that makes yeah. sense. It was, it was just that like that. That makes sense, yeah. Um, but but here's, the, here's the travesty. In 2019, this is the realm you need to be making the recommendations. And so while you have most physicians are not yet immersed into social media, um, you have a younger generation of physicians who are comfortable with the concept, but whose practices or even larger healthcare systems are restraining them and say, we don't want you to engage or we don't want you to put this information out. And all it takes is one of these attacks. So Chad just two weeks ago had a quaternary pediatric children's hospital Five communications people from there called him asking the, him how they should deal with this because their leadership is telling them not to put out anything that's vaccine related. Okay. For there's, real. There's so much here, Todd. <laughs> I'm so glad you came on the show. And I'm so glad we didn't talk much about this beforehand because now I, you get to see my response live. So <laughs> I'm going to get a drink. Well, yes, please do. And, and I apologize because occasionally you'll see me break eye contact with you to read comments because there's a lot. I'm, I'm um, and Scott person. Pango, who's an ID doc is saying, damn, I'm gonna have to listen to this later because you know this is on point. H here's the thing. The fact that these one to 2% of anti-vaxxers have frightened the large groups, the corporations into backing down from what they know is right is disgusting. It's disgusting that these people, the one to 2% exist. It's also disgusting that our big groups have no balls. And, and, and again, I can say this, you don't get to say this, but, but this is the thing. So I've had, you know, major organizations be afraid to even touch me because of my pro-vaccine sentiment, which is crazy because we all know 
in, in, in the science field that, that this is the right thing for children. The other thing is, you know, even we did a, we did a show at our, at my hospital where I'm on staff, where I love them and they love me. And we did a thing with flu vaccine and the anti-vaxxers took one little clip out of context of a live show we did and started saying, oh, we don't like autistic children because I said, Tom, you're about to get your shot, prepare to get all the autism. Mm -hmm. And it was just a passing comment. They take it out of context because that's what they like to do. And then the administration of the hospital said, you know what, we would never ask you to do this, but we are getting thousands of angry messages. Can you please make those messages go away? And I said, well, the only way to do that is that I take down that video and do a separate video where I attack these people specifically. And so I did that and I responded, but I did have to take that video down. Now that was terrible because that was a video that was spreading the word about flu vaccination. We all got it live. A bunch of doctors got it live in the physician lounge at UMC hospital and we had to take it down mm -hmm. because of pressure on the organization. Yeah. So back to you, your small private pediatrics group has a communication director, a video platform is making waves and bigger groups are coming to you asking. Yeah, so the attack went down like this, just so you get the history behind it. Yeah. So we, we post, um, I think- Was it, was, it like the Night King in Game of Thrones? <laughs> it was- it's a bunch it, of undead zombies? It was It was kind of It was kind of scary like that, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it started off nice, right? So, you Then know, you lost all your Dothraki. Westeros, yeah, you know, exactly. like everybody's happy. Um, but uh, <laughs> so what happens is we post it August 23rd, and we have about 15,000 views, people loving it. And basically we were we were saying we prevent cancer by by administering the vaccine. You can too, you the parent, so come on in. Loving it. And and and, and it did what we asked it to. People made their appointments. But about uh, it was about three weeks later, I think it was it was uh, September fifteenth, the attack starts. Over 880 people globally, right? So we tracked this, um, wow. posting over 10,000 times to our Facebook site and uh, then attacking our Google and Yelp rating. So it was coordinated because there were some pro-vaccine people lurking in these groups yeah. who were sending a screenshot saying, dude, you better get ready. This is what's coming. And so- Winter is coming. Winter, yes. is, <laughs> we literally used that. Yeah, winter, winter was coming. Um, so we said, look, we can either be victimized, and there was a couple other large-scale attacks we were aware of, but um, you know, we didn't choose to be victims. And this is my favorite soundbite that one of the newspapers picked up. But we did choose to take a stand, and we said, you know, they messed with the wrong practice. Oh, so and they, I love it. it, it was, I love it. Was bold it. letters. But we fought back with the things that scientists and physicians should research. So we collaborated with the University of Pittsburgh Graduate School of Public Health and studied the hell out of this this attack, right? By the way, lead author Beth Hoffman, huge Z Dog fan, so oh, she asked me to give a Z a scientists big... like <clears throat> occasionally like us. Well, love you, and and, oh. and Travis Lewis is our, our resident uh, PA uh, who who is our, our Z Dog connection. Though, Tra did you say Travis that. Lewis? Travis. So Lewis. Travis is a Z Packer. He is huge. Okay, uh, Travis. <laughs> You complete me. Okay, buddy. <laughs> I don't know what this was. It was supposed to be a heart, but it ended up being some misshapen thing. Anyways, back to you. So um, we study the attack, right? We we uh, we look at the the breakdown of these patients. You know, the usual fight is liberty or purity is how they come at it. That's right. You can't tell me what to do or it's not safe in there. You nailed it. <clears throat> yeah. So the study further subdivided that into conspiracy and safety and alternatives. Um, so they broke it out into four groups to give us a little bit of a more nuanced approach to maybe vaccine-hesitant people. Mm. As opposed to, again, the anti-vax. But the other three ways we fought back besides research was, one, to create a toolkit, which we are 80 pages into a living document, based on the platform. If you're attacked on Facebook, this is what you do. If you're attacked on Twitter, this is what you do. If your Google reviews have been hit, this is what you do. So it's 80 pages, kind of our story, the philosophy. And then if you're in the midst of the attack and don't have time to dive into this likely Pulitzer Prize winning uh, document, <laughs> you can go to the back and just say, I need, I'm need. i getting attacked on Google and just work off this really quick page that shows you how to start dealing with your reviews being hit or Yelp or Twitter or on Facebook. And this is what people need. So there's a toolkit. The other thing we created was something called Shots Heard Around the World, which is a vetted, private, pro-vaccine, rapid response social media rescue network. So if you're getting attacked, we light the fires of Gondor, and a single <laughs> signal fires of Gondor, and we come, we come to your aid. And then the, the where was Gondor <laughs> when they were claiming my child was autistic because of the vaccines? Where was Gondor? Where was Gondor? That's amazing. Keep going. Keep going. Okay. This is I'm I'm fired up now. And and the fourth thing has been this kind of presentation and media awareness campaign. So we have been on the LA Times, Washington Post. I presented down. Uh, I was able to help in Panama at the International Pediatric Association because this is a global phenomenon. Um, and presenting in Philly, coast to coast. I mean, we're 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 doing this internationally now. Okay. 
Let me recap this. This is amazing. So you have this big document that is a resource, and then at the back, a quick tool yes. to say, how do I respond on Twitter, Facebook, wherever I'm getting attacked? We're calling it the Kids Plus Social Media Strategy Guide and Anti-Vaccine Combat Toolkit. That's not complicated. <laughs> is there an acronym for that? Well, no, we're working on that. Give me some time. All right, all right I'll give you time. I'll give you time because people are, because Gordon Bodson asked, how do we get the, the toolkit? And we'll put links and stuff. So we currently don't have it out. It's still in draft form because oh. it is in li a living document. Mm -hmm. It's already been revised two or three times. But we want to work with a, hopefully a nonprofit that has a distribution network that can allow us to kind of get this out and get it to everybody. So okay. we're, we're working hard on that right okay, now. Okay, so the pitch here the pitch here is if you are a nonprofit or an organization that you think uh, can put some steam behind this and get it out as a distribution, obviously we offer our uh, services to get it out, but it'd be nice to have a legit org behind it that isn't ZDog MD pushing it out. Hit us up in the, uh, in the, com in the comments, actually, message your group through your website yeah and yeah and to be to be frank we're a for-profit we put thousands of hours already we have three people partial fdes working the shots heard around the world team all on our dime so we yeah. are looking to try and work with a nonprofit to get some support for the work that we're doing because this comes at the expense of like you know seeing patients and so my right. partners think yeah this is really awesome but dude we, we yeah we, we gotta we gotta pay the electricity we got rvus the the yeah, to generate so, yeah. yeah so we're, we're 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 trying to find a nice uh support network to to get this to happen that's awesome now now the second thing speaking of support network the second tier of what you're doing is this global response Shot, action squad. Shots heard. It's yeah, the, at Shots Heard. Uh, we just launched the account yesterday on Shots Twitter. Heard. Shots Heard. Awesome. At Shots Heard. And uh, the formal name Shots Heard around, around the world. That's great. And so yeah. if you get attacked, what if you're, okay, I get a lot of these messages. Z Dog, I got in this brawl with a, I'm a nurse. I got in a brawl with another nurse on Facebook about vaccines. She sent me all this crap. Could they reach out to you? Yeah. Or it's so more of a big attack? Thing? Correct. Coordinated yeah. attacks. So right. if you have a coordinated attack, and we can tell you because Chad dealt with this twenty, literally 24-7. I mean, he took some sleep over the time, but he was, he was every day waking up to thousands more hits. Mm. And so what we've noticed was when we put the word out, and I actually happened to be at the American Academy of Pediatric National Meeting when the attack occurred on our group, mm. so I could... I could literally ask for help. I was talking to Paul Ovid. I was talking to other people there. We were actually putting the word out in social media. And so when the cavalry ar arrived, we saw that that's when this curve, literally the attack, the attack's coming up. And then all these people come in to start helping us and the attack seems to go away. And, and what Chad likes to say is when a bully gets punched back, you know, they seem to like walk away. And so, you know, we studied them and we also got, you know, like physician's mom group and tens of thousands of people starts attacking with like data and explicatives. And uh, it was, it was, it was beautiful. Soapum, Soapum, I love you. They, they're big Z, Z Dog fans. Section on administration and practice management and peds. They're badass pediatricians. Um, they came to our aid. Vince Ionelli came to our aid. So a bunch of people. When that happened, we wanted to reproduce that. We said, this is something special. Let's make it's not so hard to recreate every time somebody gets attacked on a large scale. That is so awesome because it validates everything that we kind of believe. I had to take the mic off the stand because I'm so angry. Uh, <laughs> uh, it actually means nothing. It's just fun to hold something, you know, like I have a strange fetish that way, holding objects. So here's the thing. These, when, what you noticed, you noticed date, because you're a data guy, I can tell, and I'm not. I'm more like I steal other people's data and parse it in a way that um, uh, non-data people can understand. You saw that the attack started to trail off when the cavalry came in in the form of social media juice. And this is what we've noticed with our platform. So you'll get a smattering of attacks on ZDog's page, but they get destroyed. They get devastated by 2 million healthcare professionals that are like, shut the heck up. Mm -hmm. Most healthcare professionals don't have the juice to defend themselves in that way. So they are overwhelmed by this cadre, this actually rather small but vocal cadre of anti-vaxxers. What you're offering is saying, well, here's a cavalry that you can activate, yeah. especially, for con especially for concerted attacks, particularly for those, because now we can fight back and drown them out, out, out basically juice them on social media, which means SEO and all the things that you use are, are now juiced in your favor. Oh my gosh, this has been so long in coming. I'm so glad, and, and you know what? You know what's interesting? It's not an academic group that did this. It's not like some you know, big organization. It's a small, upstart, for-profit pediatric group in Pittsburgh that cares enough about their patients, that they're entrepreneurial, and they're like, you know what? This costs us money, but we're gonna do it. That is dope, man. Kudos to you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's it, it. I will show you the graph. You can even post it up there if you want. But we have the graph of where the attack occurs and where the counterattack or the support comes in. And it's it's a thing of beauty. I mean, we, we want to exactly like you said, 
if you're not big enough, even if you're a solo or a, there's a practice of, of, uh, uh, down in Oklahoma that got kind of devastated and she didn't have those resources and we've talked and we, we want, we want this help out there for, for any group. And it doesn't have to be just a physician. If it's a vaccine advocate, that's, that's uh, the target of a coordinated large coordinated. Attack. Right. Yeah. Well, so, you know, um, Monique Tello just wrote a piece in Kevin MD and she and I have been in cahoots and she interviewed me about this. And, and the truth is it, it, we need this. This is what we need because, you know, li- listen, let's be honest. Most physicians are physicians because they're a little risk averse. Really they, risk averse. Yeah. You know, they know that what they can do can hurt people if they don't do it right. They're very, we're conditioned to be careful and methodical. Yeah. Part of the reason we go into medicine is so that we can drive a Camry for sure. Like we know we're going to have this level of income at minimum, which as a pediatrician, what are you driving by the way? It's a 2014 Honda Odyssey. It's almost got 60,000 miles right now. God bless. It's pimped out though. It has a sunroof. Oh, you got a sunroof. Yeah. yeah. You know what? You're not a real pediatrician. (laughs) My buddy has a Honda. My pediatrician buddy has a Honda Accord, no sunroof. I myself drive a Toyota Camry, but it's a hybrid because I'm a hospitalist and we take it to the next level. (laughs) Um, So, so the truth is, and, and. I'm sure you get accused of shilling and all the usual stuff. Um, yeah, uh, power shill is I power think, shill. Yes. Power I shill. I mean, I I do some consulting for sure. Uh, I do it with uh, Merck with Sanofi. I've been, worked a lot on vaccine confidence issues as of late. I do work with the American Academy of Pediatrics. I do work with the International Pediatric Association. I work with the International Lactation Consultation Association. Yeah. I work with lots of people. I'm proud of what I do, but at, at the core of everything I do, it needs to be evidence based. Yeah, and and that's where this craziness comes in, where nobody is is pushing back because physicians are in the right position. They have the trust. They have the relationship. If I look you in the eye and I said, look, I'm, I wouldn't recommend anything to you that I wouldn't give to my own child. And in fact, I've given these all to my kid. That's what people need to hear. But they're so terrorized with by this weaponized social media, mm. whether it's via post or via tweet. And now the newest thing they do in coordinated fashion is go after their Google reviews yeah. and their Yelp reviews because yeah. that is a real deal financial hit, right? Yeah. If you're a millennial and you're looking for a group and you're like, hey, one star versus somebody that's quarter mile away and they're four stars, are you really going to dig into that, you know, the reviews and try and figure out what this was about? No. No. Because if, but, but if you did, if you're a millennial and you're watching the show and you're like, how do I parse these reviews? Read the reviews and watch what they say. Such and such forces vaccinations. For such and such doesn't believe in informed consent. Such and such is a shill for big pharma. The minute you see those things, assume that that's one of the better doctors you're going to find because they've t- provoked the outrage of really, really awful people. <laughs> well, I, I have a good story for you on the reviews. You ready uh, for this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here we are. We're getting pounded on our reviews. We go from four stars down to like less than a star. So we we reach out to – so we own our sites, and we have this on the tool code toolkit on how to work through this, but we go to Yelp yeah, and we say to Yelp, here's what's going on. Within two weeks, within a week, Yelp puts up a banner. This site's under review for suspicious activity. Some people even came and gave five-star protective, you know, fraudulent reviews to kind of balance out the one-star reviews so right. that they were trying to come to our aid. Right. They will do that. Yeah. Within two weeks, Yelp had everything cleaned up totally gone. One woman that Chad likes to talk about a lot, one of the anti-vaxxers, was so uh, determined, she kept putting another one star in and they would keep taking it away. And finally, after like the fourth one, she stopped. So Yelp is our gold gold standard of how this needs to be handled, okay? And we've told Yelp and we've talked with uh, Yelp and we've even talked about maybe doing some collaboration. Let me tell you about Google. Google you can't get to Google directly, even if you own your site. Matter of fact, you, as an outside viewer of my site, can can sh- can mark reviews as just as fraudulent as I can. You don't. I don't have any more power owning the site than you do to say. And and by the way, fraudulent's not even a a. Uh, you can mark it as spam or two other categories. Mm. So we go ahead and we mark it. We can't get in touch with them. We can't get in touch with them. Finally, Chad gets them through a twittermybiz.com handle through a backdoor and gets a canned response. We'll look into it. Okay, so after about a month and a half or two, they remove, unbeknownst to us why they chose these, a third of the fraudulent reviews. Mind you, we have screenshots of them saying, I'm going to post a fraudulent review. I live in Sydney, Australia. I like, you know, essential oils, and here's a one-star review for them. (laughs) And we show them the screenshots, and they don't remove those, right? So we're like, which one, why are they picking these? So he spends three more months. Now we're like six months almost into it, and they remove another third of the reviews. Now we're six months in, and so our rankings, our reviews are coming back up to two or three. So you can understand how these can be devastating. 345 days later, a third of the reviews still remain, the fraudulent reviews. And it is until The Guardian, thank you, Guardian, runs the story on our attack and then talks about the fraudulent reviews that magically, the very next day after The Guardian piece, the last third of Google, and I 
bash them every chance I can because I keep asking them for an audience. I would love to talk to you guys, tell you what's going on, make you accountable, have you help people. But right now, you don't give a crap about the authenticity of your reviews, just like Dr. Sam Ehrlich is going on in Western Pennsylvania. I counted yesterday, 41 one-star reviews within about a three-hour period because the anti-vaxxers are attacking right now. Yes, yeah, Sam got attacked. Yeah. yeah. Google, you have a responsibility and, a, and accountability. Yelp takes it seriously. I recommend you use their kind of methodology, and I'm still happy to talk to you anytime. I'm Google, a little, you I'm can, a little passionate about this. I, I'm getting teary here. I'm so angry at Google right now, and you know, because Google hasn't done crap for us either, but I'll say this. Fix your ish, Google. Like, listen, people who take care of other human beings for a living that one day will be taking care of you and your family, you're going to let this shit happen to their careers because some horrible human beings decide to fraudulently use your platform. Grow up, do something right for a change, okay? And kudos to Yelp if Yelp is actually helping. And by the way, Vitals.com, I heard from Monique, was not helpful. So we should start shaming these organizations that suck. Okay, I'm looking you in the eye and I'm telling you this. Man, that is awesome. Thank you for sharing that because I didn't know that about Google. Yeah, it's it's been a it's been a bear and I will tell you other groups are suffering. And how much is it going to take from one person that's particularly off the scale to read something like that and do something even more atrocious? Oh, so the death threat piece. Yeah. So yeah. how do you handle people who get death? Because I get hundreds of death. Yeah, so we, yeah. we aren't to your level. Uh, I don't know if that's Well, a good you know, thing no one is. <laughs> I mean, no one's going to get killed as brutally as me by an anti-vaxxer. They're going to vaccinate yeah. me to death. So um, we got, you know, your baby killers, you're killing people. Um, we didn't get the out-and-out -out death threats. We certainly got lots of horrible things said about us, but we certainly have talked to several groups. And that's another thing that we're doing is we're interviewing other groups that have been attacked. And one of the side pieces of shots heard around the world is we've now created a prospective database for future attacks mm. so that we can look at strategies, methodologies, and characteristics so that we have more data behind these. Again, University of Pittsburgh School of Public Health and their Center for Research on Media, Technology, and Health. They're the ones that we did the, we were published in the journal Vaccine on this on this research. Congratulations. Thanks. So we're, we're pretty pumped, right? So go, go at them with research and, and, and science. I'm, I'm so inspired by the stuff you're doing because, you know, sometimes it feels like you're fighting in a vacuum. Like, look, we have this huge social media um, uh, tribe, right, the ZPAC, and they're with us on this. They're with us on this ride, but each of them individually can get very scared yeah. because they, they're, they feel powerless in the setting of all this. And so to see, again, you guys have a lot on, on the line. Your livelihood depends on patients trusting you and believing you. And when they have to parse that through stuff they read on Google or Yelp, and it's incorrect, I mean, that is a huge hit. But you're willing to take that risk and fight back and give others the tools to fight back. That's a huge thing, man. There's some there's some really important system level changes that are still necessary. I mean, we've talked to Paul Offit, Richard Pam, Peter Hotez, Rene DeResta, um, and we're looking the, for- The four horsemen of the apocalypse, yeah, yeah, right. as far as the anti-vaxxers are concerned. Well, yeah. for instance, look at Twitter, right? You can, there are block bots you can put together. I'm not infringing on your first, first uh, amendment free speech if I don't want to hear what you have to say, right? Mm. You could say what you want to say to your group, but I can pre-block that. Yeah, Facebook doesn't have that. Yeah. So like we've created almost a no-fly list of people that have attacked us so that, you know, yeah, could you go in and enter 800 or 900 or 1,000 names? Why can't Facebook say anybody associated with like uh, vaccine myths and discussions or any of these, you know, pseudo, uh, uh, like they're out there trying to talk vaccines when in fact they're anti-vax, why can't we block them ahead of time? They don't have to follow me. I don't have to follow them. Right. But Facebook yet doesn't allow that uh, right. ability. Right. And Facebook talks about changing this. You know, what's interesting is, again, Zuckerberg is married to Priscilla Chan. Yeah. Priscilla Chan is a fierce advocate of public health and vaccines. So yeah. when I move back to the Bay, I'm going to try to uh, sneak in to whatever office they're in and be like, hey, bros, check it out. You don't know me. I'm a bald man. But <laughs> I care deeply about your platform being used for good because we think we're using it for good. So, Absolutely. Man, Absolutely. that's awesome. So, so let me ask then, um, what's next on your list you want to find a, a get a nonprofit to help you get juice behind the, the toolkit yeah the toolkit yeah the you have your shots heard uh yeah, around the world or just shots heard on twitter so it's at shots heard this group that it's literally i i waited to formally launch it 
tied into coming out here because I was so excited. That's so awesome. We did a soft launch about um, a month and a half ago. We have 150 plus people already vetted. So um, if you're interested in joining, it's join at shotsherd.com. That's okay. the email. Um, and basically, you're going to get a survey monkey. Please fill it out. It allows us to help vet you to see your your previous performance on social media so we know you're the real deal. Yeah. And then basically, you are now part of an email list that you'll see when there are attacks that we put the word out. Please provide support to this account. Um, we also have a closed Facebook group where there's some discussion that goes on board there with uh, Chad kind of heading that that effort. I love it. You know, and it's good because I get a lot of messages, can you please support this doctor, this doctor, this doctor, this nurse, this doctor. And the truth is, if I did that every time, it would lose juice for me. In other words, my fans don't just wanna constantly hear about doctors getting attacked. So it's good that there's a bigger tribe where we can all be a part of that. And so that's a great way to sign up and answering the survey questions means they're not a robot, they're not an anti-vaxxer, yeah, yeah. yeah. It helps us, I mean, we literally are paying people to vet through this to make sure we have a group that's that's supportive of vaccines. And then um, when there's a, an issue, they, they just email us at alert at shotsherd.com to let us know where the attack's occurring. What I'll have you do is when we're done with the show, I'll have you email me a bunch of links and different things yeah. uh, so that we can put it in the show notes on the web post when we repost this to the full tribe. Cool. Uh, and that way people will have all the resources in one place. And it's also nice because you can send people to that interview and also, because again, th these are the logistics, right? People yeah. don't realize there's a lot of work that goes into reaching people a on social media. A lot of work. You have, to, you have to have experience, you have to have the juice, you have to grow the juice, you have to know how to deploy the juice without screwing it up. I call it the juice. It's really this magical uh, influence is what it is. And you wanna use it for good. It, absolutely, if I, I mean, if there's one message I hope to convey, it's that science-based, evidence-based health advocates, pediatricians, physicians, public health workers, anybody, I want them to find their social media voice. Because right now, I think that the anti-science and anti-vaccine groups can kind of bully, threaten, and overwhelm people, but there's way more of us than there are of them, and we have science on our side. Yeah. So I want you to find your voices and to feel comfortable and confident that you can do this and you have people uh, that have your back. I love it. Can I ask you a question? Yeah. So, and this is just- Blue. Colleague, to co it, of course, yeah. I knew it. <laughs> what kind of milk do you drink? Blue, because he's a Star Wars fan. Um, I'm gonna ask you a question from a, a colleague to colleague about what I'm doing and whether you think it's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay. So when anti-vaxxers come on my page, uh, I have started just banning them. I used to let them rant because people should see what they say. Now I know the one to 2% are just delusional and unchangeable and I get messages from the 20% who are like, you helped me understand this, thank you, now I vaccinate my children. Or uh, I am so scared. I hear all these things, I watch what you do, I don't know what to do. And then you can have a good discussion, right? Yeah. Because you know that they're, they're willing to hear at least an emotional argument, uh, and then the science, right? As yeah. opposed to hitting them with the science. So, so we do all that, but, but there are times when there'll be a particular anti-vaxxer who'll do something, and I will launch every <laughs> missile in my armamentarium at once, and it will be shame, ridicule, scorn, more ridicule, ad hominems, everything that they do to us, yeah. I throw back at them with interest. Yeah. And it destroys them. So in other words, they disappear, they, they stop, because they've never been attacked back at scale. Yeah. It's like you said, a bully who's punched right in the face by someone 17 times stronger than them, yeah. right, which our platform is, it, it just eviscerates them. Now, People have criticized me and said, you, you're, you're stooping to their level, you're not using science, you're talking about ad hominems, you're this and that. And I'm like, yeah, there are plenty of good people like yourself, like Paul Offit, like Peter Hotez, that take the high road and really have earned that. My job is to fight dirty sometimes. Now, do you disagree with that as a premise for me? For you, yeah, I would say you should do what's right for you, and I think that 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 is a reasonable approach because I think you are taking this from a completely different angle than the groups that we talk to, right? So from the groups that we talk to, and I need to kind of put that in here, the number one strategy we say is don't engage because it'll overwhelm the resources. You have a platform and you have resources and you have a message that I think comes at it from a completely different angle, and and I think to your point, as we said when these people have something thrown right back at them, it really takes the wind out of their sails. But the question we get all the time is what do we do? And as Chad, our communications director says, is don't engage, hide, yeah. ban, and delete. Um, 
and and I do want to be be clear again. You're talking about the anti-vaxxers. It's the 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 other group that where the communication science really is lying right now, which is you can't throw data down at them and you can't yep. throw facts because what the communication science is, if you're already hesitant, that causes you to dig your heels in more. Hundred percent. So it's making sure that we're nuanced and understand. And there's there's actually some science that's now on a platform that's come out of collaborative research with the. Uh, Indiana University, John Parrish Sproul and, and Santa Fe Pasteur, Angus Thompson, that's called AIMS, which is a, another kind of uh, initial based um, uh, acronym for announce, inquire, mirror, and secure. It's all relationship based. It's communication science, relationship based. First announce, just say today you're going to get the vaccine to see 75% are going to say yeah. Mm. But if the 25% say, oh, I'm not sure, you want to inquire and understand what their concerns are. Not just immediately say, hey, look, don't worry. Here's the numbers. It's safe. Mm. You want to the, really, the science behind this says you want them to feel felt. You want them to know that you know what they're feeling. And if you do that, you'll see an enormous percentage of those people, once they realize you're not there just to shove something down their throat. I just rounded the other day in the hospital, and this mom had refused the hepatitis B for her baby. Uh. And I said, can I ask you what's going on? She goes, nobody will answer me straight. They basically tell me, just get the vaccine, just cause. And I feel like I'm being tacked down to. Nobody really is interested what I, you know, why, what my concerns are. My mom told me I didn't have to get all these vaccines. And I spent 25 minutes with her in the room just talking about it. And she just said, that was awesome. She goes, I, I, I'm fine getting it. And she goes, nobody talked to me yet. And that, that was all it took. Um, and so back to your original question. Yeah, I think what you're doing is amazingly powerful. And I think it does kind of take a, a serious hit back at people that are attacking us unrelentingly. Uh, uh, but but I want everybody to be clear that this is relationship-based communication to reach the people, that chunk of like 23% that will vaccinate if we can help them understand the real deal behind vaccines. Wow. Okay. Wow. Wow. Okay. So what you just did was exactly what I was hoping you would do, which is distinguish between what we're doing, which is attacking 1% to 2%, shaming them off of the internet, and what needs to be done to communicate to our patients which are the 20% that are hesitant. And what you just described is so on point because it goes back to everything we talk about with elephant and rider, this unconscious, emotional, intuitive self that we ignore when we start throwing data because we're talking to the little rider on top, but mm -hmm. that rider is gonna dig in their heels if their elephant is scared or feels otherwise. So I wanna go through that one more time before we end this. So. A is, a is announced. A is announced. Just because, and again, think of this in an efficiency manner. 75% are going to say yes. So today, you know, Jimmy needs his TDAP, uh, HPV, and an inch. Okay. Let's do that. Yeah. So you don't prime them and say, you know, a lot of people are nervous about vaccines, but here's the thing. No, you go, okay, this is what we're going to do today. If they then push back and say, well, now hold on. Yeah. Then you inquire, right. what, what, uh, what, what's so, your concern? So oftentimes, right, HPV seems to, and I, I serve on a national advisory board for HPV as well. I do a lot of work in that area. Um, and you're covered with warts. Yeah. Well, That's I wanna, the other yeah, thing. Good, yeah. good makeup job, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> um, but I'll say, can you tell me a little bit more about what your concerns are about if it's that, in that case, the HPV? I'll say, can you tell me more what your concern is? And then you might start hearing some of the disinformation. I heard it sterilizes kids. I heard it's kids. It makes them more promiscuous. I heard that uh, it, 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 you know, and, and you go through and you say, well, can you tell me, how'd you hear that? Where'd you hear that? Well, my sister posted that on her Facebook page. And, and mm -hmm. so then you kind of move to their side of the table and say, you know, that, that would scare the hell out of me if I thought that my kid was going to be sterilized with this vaccine, right? And, and really try and help meet them on their ground to understand through their eyes what's terrifying them. Then, then once you inquire and you mirror kind of what they're explaining is their concerns, if they show you that they're willing to talk further, which oftentimes is shifting that conversation over to, I can see why you're scared. Let's talk more about it. You're already trusted, right? They're in your office with their kid for care. They already trust you because they came through your door. So instead of beating them up with data, take some extra time. And I understand we are all pressed to see the next patient because of how what the time constraints are in medicine. But that extra time, whether when rounding like I did with that mom or in the exam room, is enough to let them be heard, to mm -hmm. have a meaningful discussion, to have a heart to heart with you. It can open it up. And if after inquire a mirror, it still isn't there, then you secure it, right? So you could say, look, I can see that we aren't going to agree on this. We're going to agree to disagree today. But I think what's most important is we both have, you know, Jimmy's best health and interest at, at, at heart, right? You're here for a visit. I'm here to help provide care. So, you know, let's see if we can talk further next time, but let's provide the care that we both agree on today. Oh, that's an actionable sequence and toolkit that all healthcare professionals can use to communicate. 
and I'll tell you, the International Pediatric Association has just adopted that. So when I was down in Panama, that's what they were teaching. Um, and it's it's communication and relationship-based science. Yeah. And it it we should all be better communicators. Like at the end of the day, we need to be better communicators. It, it's crazy to me that all we are is relationships. And yet we're kind of bad at it a lot of the time. Really we are reductionists, we're materialists, we're molecules. It's really this. And you know, we're gonna have um, uh, another doc on the show tomorrow who is an end of life specialist at USC. And her whole thing is words are like a scalpel, especially in palliative care. You make cuts, you make incisions, you have outcomes with your words, they matter. So the relational nature of what we do is at the heart of everything. And so what everything you've told me today is about how we can heal those relationships and best um, kind of use techniques to make sure we're doing the right thing for patients. And again, I, I think it just makes us better human beings when we actually are able to, it, it's a thing I like to call compassion. It's love and concern in the face of, of struggle and suffering. It's, and so, yeah. so, so that, that it's absolutely wonderful. And I think a pretty good way for us to, to, to go out, unless you have any other thoughts on this. No, I just, uh, again, I think we all have a voice. I hope we all can express it on social media and, and educate and, and help our families. And uh, I'm super thankful for the opportunity to be on the show today. So, so just so you guys know, like sometimes I, I get an email from a guest and a potential guest and they're super enthusiastic on the email like Todd was. And I don't know Todd, we haven't spoken. I look through some of the stuff. I'm like, this looks legit. You know what? Let's just take a risk and have him, you know, he'll come out and we'll have him on the show. And then I sit here and I'm just floored at what a perfect, perfect mouthpiece for what we're trying to teach you have been, Todd. So thank you for, for coming out here on your own dime, teaching, and again, doing everything you do to help us on the front lines take better care of children and, and adults. Thanks very much. Thanks again. So everybody, if you are a supporter, thanks for supporting the show. If you're not, become a supporter. If you're still not and you don't want to be, that's cool. But you know how you can help us? Share this video tell your friends if you're listening to the podcast leave a review on itunes because that actually helps bump us up in the rankings so we can keep up with these peter atias and these you know neil degrassi tysons and yeah i just said it degrassi because i don't respect you neil all right because i want i want your success uh thank you again to todd uh wolin for uh, off kids plus pediatrics in in pittsburgh i got it right uh and we out todd thanks brother thanks